I mean, again, he, he doesn't know who Gabriel is, right? Because he didn't come from an Abrahamic faith. The people of Mecca were pagan. The Quran has mentioned if this book was from other than God, they would have found in it many contradictions. If a book is without contradictions, that has no bearing on whether it comes from God or not. I've had phone books that are inerrant, but I certainly don't think God gave them. <laughs> that we believe without understanding. The brothers asked a very important question that most of the scholars say that listening to music, watching movies, and most of the television programs, they're haram. So how can we have fun? Let me tell you, brother, at the outset, that having fun is permitted in Islam as long as the fun is halal fun. <laughs> that the standard narrative has holes. The prophet tells us because Satan or the devil sleeps over our nostrils. Those who oversleep and not pray Fajr on time, Satan urinates in their ears. I really do think Jesus was crucified and that he really was dead and buried. He, he thought that he was a son of God in the sense that he was specially chosen by God. I think Jesus really did think he was going to be the Messiah, the future king of Israel. I mean, that is, after all, why they crucified him. Hello everyone and peace of Christ all of you. As you see today we are in the other account, Arabian Prophet. Uh, YouTube decided to give us a strike even before I go live. <laughs> Amazing. <laughs> but anyway, uh, always remember that uh, I will go in whatever channel. You know, I have I used two main channels, but there is many others just for in case. The important is we go live and we teach and people share our videos everywhere and people will follow. It doesn't really matter if if they think they can stop me that is impossible so today we have a we have a gentleman he is now here between you and uh, he uh, he called me actually his daughter she left Islam I spoke to her and uh, uh, his daughter she said that his father her father accusing me of lying to her and he said he can prove it to her in in a minute <clears throat> So I spoke to them, and I spoke to him nicely. You know, I you know I understand he is a person, he is born into this religion, and he is trying to get his daughter back to the cult of Islam. So he said to me, uh, "You told my daughter that the word uh, nikah or nukah uh, mean the F word, not marriage. If you cannot prove it, you are a liar." And my daughter, she agreed with me that she will leave Islam. So sorry, she she will leave Christianity, and she will come back to Islam because she left Islam based on a lie. <clears throat> now the daughter, she is not really, uh, she did not confirm what he said that she will leave uh, she will leave Christianity and become a Muslim again, but she wanted me. Uh, uh, this is how I felt from her uh, to get her father busted, hmm? and I hope now he is listening. And his daughter is next to him and maybe she is smiling now he said how you can prove it to us it's impossible there is no way the prophet you say such a thing so my friend i want you to watch with me on the screen the father of this lady this is the word nikah in the quran as you see it's all over in the quran the good thing is, this person, he speak, uh, he don't know Arabic, but he can read. You know, I think he's maybe originally from India or something like that. <clears throat> so this is the word nikah. And uh, you can take it from any verse you want. I mean, chapter 2, verse 235, chapter 2, verse number 37, uh, uh, chapter 4, verse number 6, uh, chapter whatever you want, you know. So let us copy the word nikah as it is from the screen. I'm taking a screenshot. So the one who do not speak Arabic, he just compare between the two words we will show in the screen. Look how fast I can prove to you that the word nikah mean intercourse, sex, does not mean marriage. Do you see how fast it is? 
<coughs> the Prophet he said, "Isna'u kulla shay'in illa nik illa nikah." The Prophet he do everything except nikah. Okay, what does that mean? They are talking about when women they have their menstruation. He said, "Do everything except sexual intercourse," and this is the Muslim translation. This is the Muslim translation. Do you see it? Okay. And this is the Arabic. So when Muhammad says, do everything except, do everything when? When women, they have menstruation. Do everything with your wives. Do all your wives. Do everything, everything else apart from sexual intercourse. What is the word sexual intercourse translated from which word? except nikah so my friend the one who just we spoke to and your daughter it is your turn now to leave islam because you said to me i challenge you there is no way the prophet will teach such a teaching and here we go we took a screenshot <coughs> for the word nikah we are going to put them next to each other so those you don't speak arabic they can read it you see how easy it is? And this hadith is Sahih, by the way. This is Sahih, Sahih Muslim. Even says, says, reported by Muslim. So let us open the image, the screenshot which we took. My computer is acting weird. Okay. Let us zoom in. This is the word nikah here. And this is the word nikah here. Is it the same? It is the same. So do everything. Do everything with your wife. She is your wife. You know, if it, if Muhammad is saying do everything except marriage, I mean, he is saying to her to send to the kiss them, touch them, play with them, fondle them, but he is saying don't marry them. Because if the word nikah mean marriage, that's mean he is saying don't marry them. So have all kind of sexual relationship with them except marrying them. And as you see here, the same repeat again. Uh, uh, do everything except the nikah. It's in the black. You see it. And the reason for this uh, uh, hadith was uh, the word nikah has two senses. You see, my friend, how 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 the people they use it in two ways. If it's mean marriage, it's mean marriage. You don't say, if the word nikah mean to get married, you don't say do everything except marriage. To do what? To do with your wife. So if Muhammad used it in his time as marriage, then he should not say the same word for sexual intercourse. Do you understand? Because either it's mean marriage or it mean intercourse. As simple as that. It cannot be both. So when you say the word mean two things, <clears throat> uh, I, I have to say that Muslims these days are using it as word mean marriage. But as you see, the word, you know, do everything except a nikah. What nikah is sexual intercourse. And this is the Muslim translation. And as you see, this is Sahih Muslim. This is Sahih Hadith. The Muslim, they cannot say this is weak and you know, this garbage always. They come to us. This is in Abu Dawood. Abu Dawood. And as you see here, this is Sahih. He says, read with me carefully. This is different Hadith. He says, Jami'uhunna fil buyut wasna'u kulla shay ghayra nikah. nikah. Do you see it? Do everything in the houses with them everything and jami'uhunna simply mean you do like uh, sexual things and do everything except what intercourse so the word nikah does not mean marriage we don't lie my friend and here you need to ask yourself in arabic we have the word zawaj everybody use it if you remember a Muslim, he said that there is a Bible translation using the word nikah. First of all, if this is true, 
this is a this is a stupid translation because he translated the Bible to the Muslims so he put the word there and the one who translated that copy is even from Germany I think or Austria so he is obviously he he's he's saying or he's translating as he learned from the Muslims but this is a very false learning our Bible is not a translation our Bible is the original and we don't approve such a thing so I will be waiting for him until now I did not receive anything I will be waiting from him to confirm uh, okay well his daughter she is saying thank you very much that was a great but uh, I don't see anything from her father yet he don't want to go live on air you know he is very private person he says he don't want to be recorded and being public and etc and I understand but as you see this is cannot be from God and in the same time Islam does not you know Islam if, if, if there is a marriage in Islam then why divorce uh, um, I mean why divorce does not even exist because when you say divorce in Islam uh, uh, what is the exactly the word divorce mean or when a Muslim he says to a talaq or talaq what does it exactly mean it's just a word you say to fire the person who's working for you. If she is really a wife, that will not that be that easy. It's not going to be easy. It's going to be really hard to finish such, such a unity happen under the name of God. But because it's just a sexual contract, then you even send a text message, she is divorced. So why, what is what divorce is that? Is that really a a divorce no they call it divorce because this is the system they used to but in reality this is nothing but an ending of contract the women she got paid when she is hired the women she is fired she get paid when she is fired and when Muhammad he says do everything except nikah you need to ask yourself he could not find a better word to use if nikah mean marriage why he used the word marriage, word, word nikah for intercourse. And if the same word means two things, that is awful. Because zawaj is way more noble than intercourse. If Muhammad and the God of Muhammad, he chose the same word as intercourse to be the word to use for marriage, that means when we say marriage, we say intercourse. When we say intercourse, we say marriage. How that can be marriage then? Until now, I see nothing from the father. I, uh, I, I guess he retreat, you know, and his daughter, she will stay as a Christian. And, uh, and yeah, she is, she is happy with the answer. And she said, that was fast. <laughs> that was so fast. <laughs> yeah, that was so fast. So, uh, uh, and by the way, I, I want to, I want to add something. Uh, in the last video we made, we spoke about Muhammad giving the wrong name for the wife of the Pharaoh, proving to us that he is a false prophet. But in, when I was speaking by mistake, I keep saying Nefertiti. In fact, the wife of uh, 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 Ramses the second, her name is Nefertari. Nefertari. So by mistake, you know, like sometimes you know your tongue say a word you don't want to say. They are very close, Nefertiti and Nefertari. So. The wife of Ramses the king, uh, the, uh, Ramses the second, her name is Nefertari, and Muhammad he claimed that the name of this woman is Asiya bin Tuhazm, and she have an Arabic name, and her father is an Arabic have an Arabic name, and her grandfather have an Arabic name. When this woman, as you see, she have nothing to do with the Arab, she never was an Arab. She's an African, and uh, uh, she is a queen of uh, of uh, uh, Egypt, and her father was a king too. So she is a daughter of a king. So this is not like the guy he married. Maybe he married a woman from the crowd from somewhere. Maybe she was originally from the Jews or from the Arab. No, she is not a Jewish. She is an Egyptian. She is a daughter of a king. And her name is Nefertari. And Muhammad, he said that his, his God told him that he married him to four. Asiya uh, bin Muhazim, which is supposedly Nefertari. <laughs> 
We don't know how, had, how where he got this name from, but as long as Muhammad, he claimed that Allah told him that, Muslim, they cannot fix that issue. So obviously, Muhammad, he think that the man, his name is Pharaoh, this is his name. His wife claimed that her name is Asiya bin Muhazim, and as we see, as, there's no such a thing. The woman, she's an Egyptian, and she is a queen. She is a daughter of a king, and her name is Nefertari, and her husband is King Ramses. He married her even before he become a king. So Muhammad, he lie everywhere. Muhammad have no value. Muhammad have no ethic. Muhammad hijacked names. Mary, she is the daughter of Amran, and we know that Amran is the father of Moses. Abraham is, is a son of Azar, but Azar is a word mean foolish in the Aramaic language, in the ancient Aramaic language. Uh, who is Azar? You go check, you find that this is very wrong. This is just stupid. Jesus, his name is Isa. Who is Isa? Muhammad, he learned from the tradition of the Jews that Miriam, the sister of Aaron, she have a son, his name is Isa. And this is, by the way, against the Bible because in the Bible, Maryam, she never get children. She have no children. So, uh, uh, Muhammad as a copy paste person, you know, we we today we play a video of a sheikh. He was saying the prophet he repeat what he's what he hear. The prophet he he repeat what he hear. So Muhammad he repeat what he hear. And when you repeat what you hear, you can repeat a lot of lies. Additional thing, when Muslims we show them something. Like now in this hadith here, it says Sahih. But what if this hadith is Daif? But doesn't matter for the Muslim. You see, it says Sahih. Now you will say you are giving wrong meaning. <laughs> and I am not the one translating. It's them, you know. Like it's, the, it's their translation in front of us. And they say you are giving wrong interpretation. You are misguiding people. So always they have to come with such an excuse. Either it is weak. And here we ask ourselves, it's weak. What does that mean? If you are saying to me that the hadith which is weak is not accepted, so why is not accepted but it's in your book? Why you are putting it in your book to teach us what your prophet said when your prophet did not say that? So this is another deception they do in order to defense. And here again the same for the word nikah. The Muslim they make videos to refute me, and this girl she saw those videos and she thought her and her father actually, not the girl, the, the father. Uh, uh, you know, he have a conversation with her. She said, what kind of God? You know, he doesn't say, I'm going to get married. I'm going to be effed. I'm not going to accept that. You know, this is very filthy. This is very, you know, marriage is, is something noble. Marriage is something uh, way more than just two people having intercourse. So when Muhammad, he says, when you do things with your, with, with those women, who they are your wives, supposedly, right? They are your wives. Why, why you are doing those, the, the nikah with them? <laughs> You know, why you are kissing them and touching them, etc. Because simply they are lawful for you. So, jami'uhu, jami'uhunna, jami'u in Arabic mean to do the F word actually. But Muhammad is saying jami'uhunna and he put he the exception. So, like like saying, uh, uh, do do it, but don't put it in. Let us make it simple. So, jami'uhunna fil buyut. And here the story is about that when the Jews, the Jews, and here we, we, we send our message to this lady, look what the Muslim they say about the Jews and the Christians. That when the Jews, the Jews, among the Jews, when the women menstruated, they ejected her from the house and they do not eat with her, nor they do drink with her, nor they associate with her. This is absolutely false because if you uh, who is going to throw his wife in the in the street because she have an instruction? <laughs> Here you see how the fiction and the lies about Christianity about Judaism. When a woman she have menstruation, we, we throw her in the in, in the street. So where she goes, she sleep under the stairs. <laughs> but here you notice that the Jews, even according to the Muslim and the Muhammadan stories, they refuse. Uh, did I lose connection? I don't know. Uh, they refuse. They refuse to have any relationship, sexual relationship, with their wives. Uh, you know, when she have menstruation, Muhammad he do the opposite. Muhammad he told his people to do the opposite. In the same time, Muhammad he tried to fix it when he heard the Jews they do that. But it is he fixed it in a very wrong way. Uh, uh, so in the Quran here it says,
You will see here Muhammad trying to copy the Jews. Here, Muhammad is trying to copy the Jews. They ask you concerning the women, courses, say they are a hurt and pollution. So keep away from the women in their courses. This is what the Jews do. Do not approach them until they are clean. This is what the Jews do. But look what Muhammad did. Muhammad, he told them, uh, well, this verse doesn't mean, uh, uh, you know, like, okay, uh, we have to copy the Jews. We have to say, as they say, uh, okay, it's not good to go to the women and they have the demonstration, stay away from them. Uh, but you know what? Do everything except nikah. But the verse says, stay away from them. The verse says, it's a hurt. The, pro, the, the verse says clearly, don't have any relationship with them during that time until they are clean. Look, the verse is so even so clear. It says, until they are clean. But because Muhammad, he is creating his own cult. He do as he want. And then right away, look what he said. Nisa'akum harthun lakum. Your wives as a terth into you. So approach your teeth as you uh, as you or how you will. Muhammad he consider women as the same as a ground, and you dig in the ground as you wish. How filthy is that is. And by the way, the word nisa'akum doesn't mean wives, that's a lie. Nisa'akum mean your women. The word nisa, this is the chapter, this is why the Quran have a chapter called Nisa, which mean women. So translation is false. Nisa'akum harthun lakum. Your wife is a terth for you. So dig in your terth as you wish. And this was about what? This is all dirty. Uh, uh, the Jews, they refuse to have uh, sex with women from the wrong location. You know what I'm saying. Muhammad, he refuted them saying, do as you wish. They are a terth for you, so do it as you wish. Then Muhammad, after that, he started copying the Jews, saying, oh, doc, okay, don't do it there. Don't do it there. But if you read this one, you will see it says, they are as you, they are you, those women, they are your teeth. So approach them however you will or when you will. However, how you will and however. What, when you want and how you want. What kind of religion this religion is? And then Muhammad, to make the ethic go bigger, he says you can lie to your wives and you can take an oath lying to them. Allah will not call you account for your uh, 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 thoughtlessness in your oath. Well, all liars, they are thoughtlessness in their oath. But for your intention. <laughs> so a man, he swear that to his wife, he will not go to different women. His intention is to make her happy, let us say, so she will not, uh, or she will not chase him. She will not maybe take the money. She will not, whatever. So look at this religion. Allah will not take you accountable for, for your oath, but for your intention from the oath. So what does that mean? You see how stupid it is? Allah will take you accountable, not for your oath, but for the intention of your oath in your heart. So in my heart, uh, I say Muhammad himself, he took an oath to his wife. He wouldn't sleep again with, with, the, with, the, with the slave. And then Muhammad later, uh, you know, he decided to break his oath. So Allah, he make a verse for him. He says, uh, why you forbid what Allah made lawful for you? And Allah will not take you accountable for your oath. So another proof that Muhammad is a fraud, have no ethic. He is teaching Muslims to lie to each other. A man lying to his husband, the man lying to his wife, the wife lying to her husband. Actually, Muhammad, he says a, a, a Muslim can lie in three cases. 
to his wife, which means his family, and to his uh, friends, and to his enemies. So he's left. And the excuse is good intention. Always the excuse is good intention. Well, always the liars, they have good intention. If somebody he rob a bank, he will say, I have good intention, you know, um, I am poor. <laughs> I'm going to give some money for a, a mosque. Uh, 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 good intention. Uh, okay, somebody attack a woman, he raped her because he want to have more baby to spread this now. This is good intention. Uh, I take an oath. Uh, uh, I will. Uh, I take an oath that the Quran is telling the truth, uh, and the Christian prince is lying. Uh, even the Christian prince is saying the truth, but if my intention is good to defend Islam. So I can take an oath, false oath, because my intention is good. So this is a very satanic cult, and there is no way that this is, can be from God, right? And then you will see here. Uh, Muhammad here he says when you take an oath of your wife let us say uh, you decide to say something divorce them let us say stay away from them for month Muhammad later he changed it it became a three month I mean what kind of God this God is it's three months it's four months when a man he divorced his wife if the divorces exist as you see he have to stay from the wife for three months why to be sure that she is not carrying a baby what kind of god he do not know that if a woman she have menstruation already she don't have a baby why he need to have three months to wait and then muhammad he make it more filthy he says it is a, it is a, 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 the divorce is a twice okay what does that mean after that if the divorce happened, the woman, she cannot go back to her husband unless she do nikah. And here again, we can prove that the word nikah means the intercourse. Read carefully. So if he divorced her, she is not lawful for him until she do nikah to a new husband. She do what? She do nikah to a new husband. So she will not be able to go back to the previous husband unless she go and do nikah to the new husband. And this is in total agreement with the word nikah we showed you in the hadith. If you remember in the other hadith where Muhammad uh, supported a man, uh, he did beat his wife because she refused to do nikah with him. The man he did beat his wife because simply she didn't want to sleep with him. And then Muhammad, he said to the women, well, if your intention to go back to your previous husband, you should know that you cannot go back to your husband until you do nikah to this new husband. This is the word nikah. So if the word nikah means marriage, she is already married to this guy, but she is not doing nikah to him. Right? She's already married. She is, she is already wife of this guy, you know, uh, 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 Abdul Rahman. But Muhammad saying to her, well, you cannot go back to Rifa unless you do nikah to the new husband Rifa. Sorry, new husband Abdul Rahman. So, so what the condition is to go back is to do nikah and Muhammad actually make it more ugly. You see here they are translating saying the word uh, sexual intercourse but in fact Muhammad he did not use really the word sexual intercourse he used the word you taste his orgasm and she tastes your orgasm here it says Hatta yadhuqa, uh, min asilat, uh, until he tastes from your orgasm you go to the dictionary and you will see that the word usayla mean the word mean orgasm and here the Muslim be translated enter your husband uh, cons uh, consummate your marriage. What does that mean? So, you see, so the word nikah does not mean marriage. The word nikah means the F word. And here again, Muhammad, he keeps saying, you are not lawful for the previous husband unless he tastes the new husband. 
he do nikah to you and he tastes your orgasm and you taste his orgasm. And as you see, all of this is a very authentic hadith. So I hope I don't hear anything from this gentleman, you know, like he don't have any argument no more. Uh, he was he was really upset and uh, he screamed. He says, you did lie to my daughter. And his daughter, she said to him, no, he did not in front of his face. And uh, he said, well, let us see if he can prove it. Let us, you know, uh, he was taking advantage of you because you do not know, you are not knowledgeable and you don't, you know, you have, you don't know much about Islam and etc. So the challenge is accepted and the answer is given. And the father obviously retreated and he discovered that his prophet is obviously a perverted man. Uh, Let us see. Anyway, there's many, we can go to many places, but I think this is enough. Again, guys, just take a note, please. We are going to go live here for now because we have a strike in other account. Uh, so tell your friends, please share. And even we, if we have a strike here, who care? We open a new channel and people will come. You see, uh, uh, my message even to you too, uh, you will, doesn't matter, you can't stop me. Because open an account to, to take two seconds. And we, I have already many, many accounts open for uh, like a, for a flat tire, you know, occasion. So uh, nobody can stop us. Always you will go live, always we will make videos, always we will share education. And always we will get Muhammad busted. So today we learn two things. If Muslim they say to you that how the Quran knew about Ramses, the Pharaoh, tell them your prophet he know nothing. And the proof is your prophet he think that Ramses the second, his name is Pharaoh, and he think. I should not you think only he he said that his God told him that the name of the wife of the Pharaoh is Asiya bin Muzahim. It's an Arabic name, as you see, Asiya. This doesn't make sense. The daughter of Muzahim is an Arabic name, and even her grand grandfather, his name is Al Walid. Where the Muslims and where Muhammad he got those names from, or Allah knows best. Uh, and as long Muhammad he claimed that Allah told him, Muslim they cannot say, Oh, it was a mistake of somebody. Muhammad, he says, Allah, he promised me. When Khadija, she was in the death of death, in the bed of, the, of death, the rude Muhammad, imagine your wife, she is dying. And now he is making fun of her, obviously. He said to her, send my greeting to my wives. Khadija, she looked at him and she said, you married women before me? Because remember, Khadija is the first wife of Muhammad, supposedly, or to Qatham, not Muhammad. Uh, he changed his name after he married Khadija, he got rich, and now he claimed to be a prophet, so the old name doesn't fit. So he changed it from Qatham to Muhammad. So Khadija, she said, you married me, married women before me? She was shocked. Muhammad, he said, no, but Allah, he promised me, Asiya, the wife of the Pharaoh, Mary, the mother of Jesus, and the sister of Noah. I mean, the guy, he did not leave anybody. Anyone is famous. I mean, even the sister of Noah, all the way to the sister of Noah and, and the mother of Jesus. Obviously, this person is mentally ill. Why does God want to give Muhammad Nefertari? Hey, Muslims, the, this is the picture of your coming, uh, pro, the, the prophet wife. You see her? She's naked, brother. What you would do about it? Do you accept that your prophet wife, she have a statues? between two guys? Really you accept that? So Muhammad obviously is a fraud for the wife name is Nefertari, is not Asiya, and Muhammad as usual. He is a fabricator and what we do here we get him busted. All right.
So a correction about the previous video, it is not Nefertiti by mistake. I was saying Nefertiti because it's the same, like Nefertari, Nefertiti. So it was Nefert Nefertari, not Nefertiti. And uh, if you download the video, just make a correction in your video. So people will not be... Uh, actually, in the screen, it shows Nefertari because I show in the same article. Uh, but I was, you know, I was reading fast. So I like, you know, the, the famous name is Nefertiti. So I was saying Nefertiti. So it says Nefertari. And you know, you notice here that even those names, they are pure Egyptian names, have nothing to do with the Arab. And the Egyptian are Egyptian. They are, they are not an Arab. They are not. They are African. How the wife of, of the Pharaoh suddenly her name became an Arabic? And how her father became an Arabic when this guy, you go right now and search who is Nefertiri. And actually you will see that in, in the same in the same article, which is, you know, th this is Egypt today. This is a this is a website owned by Egypt. Let us let us uh, let us show you the, the it's called Egypt Today. And the one who wrote the article, suppose she is expert in history of Egypt, obviously she is Egyptian. Uh, her name is Rana Atif obviously Muslim Egypt today and you can find this is same you can just search the name Nefer, Nefertari uh, uh, who is she and you will find the, uh, her father name uh, what she you know those people believe they are goddess you know I mean <laughs> the Muslim the Muhammad they made her they made her believer in Moses the Muslim Moses <laughs> and even the Muslim they claim she was a Jew I mean, their fictions and their, 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 their this this religion is just a collection of fictions and hip, you know, like hippie stories. They got stories from everywhere. Christian author he wrote a book. It's called or a story. It's called the Seven Sleepers. Muhammad he heard the story. He claimed that Allah told him the story, and this is a true story. When this is have nothing to do really with any true. Uh, uh, seven sleepers and Muhammad because he do not know really the language this is this is written in, in Aramaic uh, just to show you an example of, of the city Muhammad <clears throat> they asked Muhammad you know, the Jews always, they make fun of Muhammad. I mean, this is what the Jews did. This is why he hate them very much. They they get him in trouble and they ask him questions to examine how stupid he is. And always he never, never failed them. Always he give a stupid answer. So, uh, the Jews, they told him, do you know the story of the sleepers? He said, sure. Allah will tell me about it. Allah told him. So he said to them, I will tell you, Allah told me, I will tell you about the seven sleepers. Some they say they were three and their dog is being fourth. Some they say they were five and their dog is being six. Uh, doubtfully guessing at, at, at the unknown. Yet other they say they were seven and their dog is being number eight. And now Muhammad will give the answer, say, Allah knows best. Allah, uh, Allah knows their number and only a few people. So what is the answer? So Muhammad here is trying to be smart. He do not know really what their number. I mean, he, he just told you they are seven. The story name is the seven sleepers. How come you do not know the name, the number? So some they say three and the, their dog is number four. First of all here, the, the, in the real story, there's no dog. But because Muhammad is an idiot, the word there is Kali Ahum. Kali Ahum. Kali Ahum means their protector. So this story here is about seven sleepers and they have an angel who stood in the front of their cave and he opened his arms to stop the army of the king. Have you ever heard of a, a dog will protect them from a king and his army? It's a dog. So some they say three and their dog is number four. Some In Arabic, in English, in any language, you don't say and the, and the fourth is a dog. Because the fourth is not a human. You can say there's a three girls and the fourth was a guy. You can say there's a three uh, 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 unknown men and the fourth was Ahmed, the dead terrorist. But you cannot say there was a three and their dog and the, and the, and the fourth is a dog. 
that is against any language for the fourth have to be from the same kind you can say uh, uh, three uh, apples and the fourth is an orange that is not the fourth that is one orange and three apples we cannot make it number four so Muhammad you do not know the answer and the answer is very simple Allah knows best and then Muhammad he claimed that this is an inspiration came to him from God Here we go, Muhammad got them busted. Allah, he knows everything. Allah, he knows the unseen. And everything Muhammad, he say, is coming from Allah. So the story written by an, an, an author, he is from Syria. Fiction story. Muhammad, he take it, he put it in the Quran. He claimed that Allah told him. And now they ask him how many they are still he Until now, we do not know the answer. Some, they say there are three and their dog. And what the point of this? Some they say they are three and their dog is number four. Some they say they are four and their dog is number five. Some they say they are five and their dog is number six. Some they say they are six and their dog is number seven. Some they say they are seven and their dog is number eight. What is that? So what the point of this stupid story? When the Christian author, he wrote the story, it is about patient. It's about the Christians sooner or later will be victorious. Now they are discriminating you. God can do miracles. And one day you will be victorious. Have patience. Here there's no point of the story. Here the God of Islam even can't give us the number. How many there are Muslims? Are they three and their dog is number four? Are they five and their dog is number six? So what the point of this? Why he say they say to you three and their dog is number four? I say they are seven. That's it. But Allah knows best. This is silly. And then the Muslims, uh, the second you ask them questions about this story, just to prove that this is this is a fiction story made by Christians, you will see that those people, they according, according to the Quran here, they stayed in the cave for 300 years and 9 years. 300, 309 years. The multiply of number 3. 3 again. Why 300 years and nine years? And then, uh, uh, I mean, it's it's very silly. It's very, very dummy story. It makes no sense. And uh, there is no point of telling this story. Uh, we don't even know who they are, those people. If you ask Muhammad now, okay, who is those three and their dog is number seven? What language they speak? Where they live? What are their names? What is that? Is that really a book from God? Three and their dog is number five, four. And since when the dog, he have two arms. Does he? So the word Kali Ahom, which is, which mean their provider, Muhammad, he make it a dog because he could not read the word correctly. Let us see. If you go to this verse, Uh, I just received a message from the father saying, thank you very much, you are right. <laughs> so now we have the father and the daughter living in Islam. That's wonderful. <laughs> okay. Happy, happy to hear to hear from you, my friend. I'm so glad that you agreed. Uh, and then he's saying this is messed up. <laughs> and then let's continue. Okay, I'm, I'm happy to hear. So, and then here the Muslim, by the way, 
you will see that there's a miracle here. It's known by science now today that uh, a human being, he cannot live without a son. And Allah, he was uh, flipping them from the right of the cave to the left of the cave. And why is that? Because so they can keep having the sun and have the vitamin and etc. So they can live. And so secondly, if you sleep in one side, that will hurt badly. It can cause a very serious damage. Here we see the stupidity. I mean, the, 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 those are supposedly, they are experiencing a miracle and we are worried about flipping their back. Is that a miracle or this is a nursing house? Do you see how do you see how I refute the stupidity here? This is the problem, you know. When a Muslim they debate the Christians, Christians don't read carefully. Is this a miracle, or this is a nursing home? A nursing home, I will say, I will go with you. Okay, so the, the, we were flipping them sides because they are asleep and they will sleep for long. But this is a miracle. I mean, okay. So now we flip them from right to side to left to make them stay alive. What about food? Three hundred years without food. 300 years without water, so the flipping now will, will help? What is that? So either it's a miracle, or, it is a, or it's a nursing home. So, you know, the, 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 the silly argument, it's go beyond the imagination sometime. And, uh, okay, you would deem that they are weak, but they were asleep. And we turn them to their right and their left aside. Their dog is stretching forth his two four legs. Have you ever heard of some such a thing like this? So, the dog isn't the dog is haram in Islam. Isn't the dog is najis? Isn't it the dog will bring filth? Why the dog is there? Suddenly the dog is uh, is a miracle too. <laughs> and and uh, uh, what happened? That's in the Aramaic language. It says that their provider he opened his arms, which is his wings as an angel. So he opened his arms as a protection in the in the cave door. So nobody can see even the door. So it's like a magical thing. As again, this is a this is a fiction story, but let us say it's a miracle. Because God can do miracle, right? We believe in miracles anyway. But here, when the Muslim they speak about amazing scientific discovery that the Quran speak about Allah flipping them aside from side to side, this is the most stupid thing ever you can say to me about God. Because if God wanna say something, he he say be right, and it's going to be. So do God need to flip them right and left to keep them alive? This is an insult to your God. Are we listening, people? Do God need to flip them to the right of the side and the left of the side to keep them alive? Is it this is a miracle or this is a you know a doctor uh, evil laboratory? So, and the problem of of people when they debate Muslims, they don't treat carefully. You know, this is why Muslims they don't really have a problem to debate many of the Christians, most of them. But with me, they they refrain. You know, don't go there because this guy he read differently, this guy he see differently, this guy he will flip it upside down on us. This guy he flipped the table as simple as that, as Jesus he did in the in the Jews in his time. And when the Quran says some they say three and they are number four, that is making it even more funny and more stupid. Same time, uh, you would see in the sun when it rose, declining to the right from their cave, and when it set, turning away to the left. Look at this. Is that a cave? Are you sure this is a cave? Because this cave, in order to receive the sun that far inside, it might be, I mean, I don't know, maybe this is in the 70th floor in the, in the Himalaya. And what about the winter sun? Is it the same? What about the summer sun? Is it the same? Isn't it the Quran says that Allah is the Lord of the two east and the two west?
Allah is the Lord of the two, we, uh, two east and two west. That because Allah, he have extreme knowledge about astronomy and how the sun move. So Allah could not explain why the sun in the summer is different from the sun in the winter as location. So he claimed that he is the Lord of the two east and the Lord of the two west. But who in the world can believe in such a thing? Do we have really two east and two west? Imagine if science discover that there is two east and two west. The Muslim will go crazy. Right? If you go down here, another mistake in the Quran. I mean, whatever you go, this is stupid. It says, uh, there is two bodies of water floating, meeting together, flow, uh, uh, flowing, uh, uh, meeting together. Uh, but this doesn't say that, by the way. This is a false translation. It says that two seas, Al Bahrain. Change the translator, you will find a new Quran. This is Yusuf Ali. Why the Muslims they don't want us to see the word two seas? Because this is a mistake right away from the from the start. Because the fresh water is not a sea. It's not. He has let loose the two seas between two bracket the salt water and the fresh water meeting together okay are they meeting together read what it says after that between them a barrier which none of them can transgress so according to the stupid quran salty water and fresh water they don't ever meet why because there is a barzakh between them the most time they they fool some people they say to them uh, go to youtube you will see uh, uh, like a uh, Two colors of waters they say subhanallah they are not mixing as the quran says my friend salty water and fresh water always they mix get a cup of salt salty water and cup of fresh water and put them in one pot to see if they're to mix or not very simple what the quran here is saying that between them a barzakh barzakh is a dry land you can go right now read chapter 55 verse 20 go to ibn kathir and you will see the word barzakh or you can go to the dictionary you see the word barzakh is a dry land so here they fabricate even the meaning they claim it is something when it is something else out of them both come out pearl and coral i don't know how much this accurate is but it's very silly what does that mean exactly I mean, what you know pearl and coral this is what we live by. So, and the funny, by the way, uh, the Quran says, uh, repeat this sentence, by by which of the blessing of your Lord you deny. Okay. But the Quran keep repeating the same verse. This is this is a statement of a person have nothing to say. I mean, that's it. You, are, you said that already. Then Allah, he make a challenge to the genies and the human to leave the zone of the earth. And then you go and read the interpretation, they will say to you, the prophet told us that uh, no one can leave the zone of the earth except the angels and prophet of Allah only, like Muhammad or Isa, as an example. Anyone else will try to leave the zone of the earth, Allah will shoot him in his ass by a fire. How scientific is this? How fiction it is? You know the answer. Already we have a spaceship and it is actually, there's people who live in it the whole year. The whole year is not like they go in two days and come back, no. They are living there full time. And this is supposed they will prove that Allah is God. So the God of Islam, he forbid anyone from leaving the earth. And if you try to leave the earth, Allah will shoot you. And he challenged the genie and the human. Not only the human, I mean the genie too. And the Muslim, they will say to you, except by the authority of Allah, doesn't say authority of Allah, will look like the authority of Allah extended to the Soviet Union and the American and the Kuffar. But all of us, we knew that the authority, the Muslim they speak about in reality, this is only angels and prophet of God, they can go until the judgment day and then judgment day, uh, you know, God, we will send supposedly those who they are bad uh, to hell and those who they are good to heaven. 
And as you know, the heaven of Islam is hell, especially with the promises Muhammad he gave. So it doesn't matter really where you go. Uh, you will find a stupid story all over. Look, from every kind of fruit, there is two pairs. Have you ever heard of a God who promised us such a thing? There's two kinds of banana. There's two kinds of coconut. There's two kinds of orange. There's two kinds of grape. There's two kinds of... <laughs> and you notice here that Muhammad, he, he, he have to use the word fruit in pairs, not a choice of a fruit, but a choice to make the end you see here, if you don't, I know you don't speak Arabic, but you see this letter at the end. Here, he have to make the same tone, like, Tukadhiban, Zawjan, Tukadhiban, you know, you see? So he have to repeat the same thing, just in order to make like a rap song, so, which is very silly and very stupid. He forced his heaven to change to be silly, just because he needed the letters to be at the end. He tried to find the word fit to be there. And regarding this issue here, I mean, my videos became long. I, I suppose he would just answer this gentleman. Uh, regarding this, uh, the, the, the Arabic language, if you remember two days ago, we have a Muslim, he called me, and we said, I said to him, the ant may Quran, if you remember. The ant may Quran. And the funny is that the ant make Quran and the ant she is making Quran and she is ending the same with, with the same ending as letters. Chapter 27, verse number 18. You will see here. You ask the Muslims who is talking, they will say to you, Allah. Okay. Use own. The last letter is noon. Nuzaun. Okay. The ant she said. Uh, look the ant she is trying to make her on fit with the tune <laughs> you know you know what I'm saying if this is the ant talking why she is keeping the same terms the same tone we get it Allah saying use your own the ant she end with that are into If the Muslim they would say that this is the this is not the end saying that that's mean Allah he lie he changed the words. To make it simple, like you say, I saw someone he is fat, and now you say to me, well I don't like uh, uh, I, I don't like to uh, uh, I, I don't like that. So we are exchanging conversation, and you try to keep the same letter at the end. How the end she is doing that? And did the ant speak in Arabic? The Muslim, they would say no. The ant, and the guy agree actually, the ant, they do vibrate or chemical. So how the chemical of vibration became Arabic? With tone at the end. Yeah, this is DJ mixing. And then uh, uh, Sulaiman, he answered, and he added that are known at the end, as -salihin. And then he checked the, the bird, he didn't find al hudhud he said al ghaibin <laughs> And then he was going to punish the hudhud the bird, for not being there. He says, Bisultani Mabin. Okay. <laughs> what the heck is that? <laughs> Somebody saying it's a poem. No, this is the this is this doesn't doesn't go to the level of a poem because it's a stupid statement. Secondly, it doesn't it doesn't have a, you know, in Arabic we have like a special balance for for poem, and if you don't keep it, you don't you don't you don't have one. This is this is in Arabic supposedly called saja, but this is a stupid saja. This is why Muhammad he forbid people from doing that. If you go in the hadith, you will see. Muhammad he forbid anyone trying to make speak. In a way which is way better than the Quran. It's called Saja. Saja uh, Read here when you care for it. Uh, Messenger of Allah, uh, uh, he heard a person, his name, 
al-Nabigha al-Hudali. And he was speaking so good. You know, he spoke like in the language, which is really, really good, you know. So what Muhammad, he said to them, he said, this is the, uh, the, the, uh, the, the, the Raymond speech of the Kohan, of the, uh, uh, of the monks. But those are not really monks. Those are people who, uh, they speak in a, like, let us say they are very good in the Arabic language. And, uh, like you know, like they were rap, you know. But the whole those people, the whole conversation they do, they do it this way. They don't talk to you normally. So you say, "I want to have a coffee." They give you an answer. End with the with the with the word coffee. You know what I mean? Everything they say, not only just in a certain time, just for fun. So when Muhammad he heard someone speaking it. And in his time, there was many of them. Muhammad, he tried to copy them. And this is why, after that, Muslim, they forbid people, and Muhammad forbid people from practice and such a thing. He said about this person, oh, he is one of the brothers of uh, South Sayers. I don't know what the word means in English, but I think you know better than me. For me, I read in Arabic. So they speak in a certain way. And Muhammad, he was trying to copy them to make Quran like them. And look how many times this is repeated. All right. So do we have any question? We have uh, Shafiq from, uh, uh, he texts me in Patreon. The ex-Muslim. If you are here, my friend, just ask me the question now before we go for today. So, guys, just remember, please. As you see, we don't have too many yet. They knew that I am here in this other account. We will not use that uh, uh, Christian Prince account for some time. Uh, we are here in the Arabian Prophet. So, tell your friends. And remember always, if I lose my channels. You can find me in Patreon, and the last thing I will update for life that will be my channel. Doesn't matter where it is. All right. So the channel is not really uh, someone who can foresee the future. Ah, okay. Well, uh, no, this is a false translation. Really, uh, the Kohan, the Kohan. Uh, yeah, it's like, you know, you can you can tell the future, but those people, they speak wisdom. Muhammad is being a fool again. So, uh, uh, there's a person, who's, uh, maybe I should make a, a video about it. I, I, th I, actually, I think I did made, I made videos about this topic. Uh, there's a person, he was very, very huge as as body, as a, as a, as a, as a shape, you know. This guy, he is so famous that nobody can speak Arabic like him. Nobody. He don't make poetry. And uh, uh, people, they could not understand how they can do that. So they start saying uh, the genie uh, inspired them, uh, the goddess inspired them. Otherwise, how they can do that, you know? And here, when Muhammad he said such a thing, he agreed that they are they are, they are supported by goddess. But he's being stupid. They are just people who have a very uh, uh, skill. They are skilled in the language. Muhammad he tried to copy them to make Quran, but his Quran comes so silly and so stupid, not even close. So there is some famous names in in this uh, in the history of Arabia. Uh, as an example, Sutayh. Uh, I don't know if I can find any hadith about Sutayh. Let us see in English. Sutayh is the most famous one, and nobody can beat this guy ever in the history of Arabia. Uh, let us see. Yeah, I don't think in English we will find anything about him. Yeah, 
anyway the Arab they used to uh, to uh, accept those people as as if they are monks you know this is why they called uh, uh, Kohan so why they why they uh, they consider them people of value because simply when they speak they don't just make an Arabic words they speak wisdom they speak uh, uh, ethic they speak uh, 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 you know it's it's not just a it's not just a language you know it's just it's it's a teaching it's education uh, it is a, a, a school of uh, of uh, wisdom let us say Muhammad he tried to copy them and one of the most famous one was Sutayh and Muhammad he tried to copy but his Quran comes so silly and so stupid those topics you know I can make videos about them again but the problem is uh, you, you guys don't speak Arabic Uh, actually, there's a verse in the Quran. Let me see. I'm trying to remember. It's, you know, sometimes, like when you want something, it's not really in your head right away. <clears throat> but it is in the chapter of Al Haqqa, I think, verse number 43. Uh, but I want to be sure first before I go there. Let us see. <clears throat> there we go yeah I was right people they told Muhammad are you trying to be one of those Kohan this is in chapter 52 and chapter 69 they told him are you trying you know or, you know, he is Muhammad. He said to them, Allah, Allah told me to tell you, I am not from the Kohan and I am not a crazy. Hmm? <clears throat> See it? So, Muhammad he denied that he is trying to be one of them. With his Quran, why? Because people didn't notice he is trying to make it the same as they do, but he is far beyond to be able in that stage because the Quran is very silly and very stupid. And the same can you can be found in chapter sixty nine, verse number forty two. Again, Muhammad again denying that he is one of them or trying to be one of them. All right. Yeah, I have my book in Swedish and German and Dutch. Yes, we do. So as you see here, even the Arab at that time, they noticed that Muhammad trying to copy those uh, 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 Kohan, trying to speak like them. But obviously, it's a failure. And, you know, the, the Arab, they were laughing at him. All right. This is why you see all the letters here in Arabic. They're trying to end with letters match together but he is 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 in this ability because look tu'minun tadhkurun then alamin this doesn't fit with tu'minun you can tell even from the by your by your hearing right he he used the same letter in at the end but tadhkurun but it's not the same as alamin it's not the same he could not make it his 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 very short of words al uh, aqawil here he broke it and then he go back to yameen but he was in tu'minun and then he jumped to hajizin muttaqin <laughs> so muhammad is a thief for everything everything around him he observe he take it and you see uh, he, and the arab they were laughing at him and he says he is not, this is not a word of point. It is not a word of point. Why Muhammad said that? Because they laugh at him and say, what kind of point is this horrible point is? 
So he said to them, who said it's void? So he denied that he is one of those Kohan, and he denied that he is trying to make point because he is not fit in both. Because as a point, he could not make it. As a saja, he could not make it. So what it is? Right? So any question? Again, a reminder, people, we are going to be here in Arabian Prophet for some time. And we might go back to the Christian Prince account later. We don't know. But it uh, doesn't matter really which account. The important is we are here to learn and to listen, right? Which channel is not who care? I mean, this is not a house. It's just a strip at YouTube. Do we agree? So if we create a new channel, don't be lazy and say, oh, I'm going to, you know, because if you, you, you see, the funny is the video I make, let's say I made a video today, right? You go to the channel where they are loading my videos. It have a three time view more than my channel. And I am the one who made it. <laughs> Isn't it funny? <laughs> I don't know why. I think YouTube is targeting me. And uh, we just, we just receive a strike, as you see. So it doesn't make sense. It doesn't make sense that a person, I am going live and nobody get notification, nobody receive notification. You know, people have a hard time to find to find the videos. And then uh, uh, like after, let us say 10 hours, I get like 10,000 or 15,000 view. Then the guy who load my video, <laughs> it's not fresh anymore. He make three times, four times more than me. <coughs> So obviously YouTube is playing games with us, but it's okay, you know. Uh, the important is, I'm so glad really I made a revolution. Like when I when I spoke to this girl today and her father, uh, I was sure that I will convince him that he is wrong. I have nothing against him as a person, you know. I actually respect the person. He is he want to be sure that his his, his daughter is, nobody is fooling her, nobody is lying to her, you know. And we will never do that. Everything we say, we show it in the screen. You can go check it out. Uh, we made the revolution. Christians now today, they are very well armed with answers. And Abdul and Muhammadans, Muhammadanism cannot fool them. Uh, once I was reviewing YouTube about, uh, you know, a video uh, of mine. And then a Muslim, he says, you worship a man in the, in the, in the comment. Then other person he answered, saying, huh, you worship a shin. And at that time, I was like, it's not too much popular between Christians. I'm trying to teach the Christian that Allah is a shin. So I wanted to see who was this guy. So I click at his name. And so you believe it or not, he was like nine or 10 years old. He, have, he is posting videos about games. Uh, he's a kid. So I was happy to see... Uh, a Christian kid was able to refute the Muslims mockery of Jesus that we worship a man will you worship a leg what kind of God he is a leg why he have a leg anyway any Muslim can tell us if Allah is not a man why he have a leg So, you know, we came in a time where Christians, they are not, you know, they are not ready really for debating this garbage religion. Let us show the hadith. And now we have thousands and thousands of videos made by me to teach you for hours and hours and actually i advise people who uh, they download my videos uh, uh, to let us say uh, to cut the videos make them shorter let us see i'm trying to find the hadith about let us see <coughs> Yeah, try to find to cut the videos and make them short. Like today, we make a video about what the word nikah mean. Cut it, make it two minutes. You know, 
you don't need to have all this video oh, this video can be cut to many parts many uh, many videos show the tafsir about chin okay i will share the tafsir about chin no problem here we go we have our friend harun he is a challenge in me i like that harun do you like to call me and challenge me and so you can read with me harun I bet you Harun, he do not know his name, what his mean. He's a male cat, the horny one. Anyway, uh, so Harun, he said, I dare you to show us the interpretation for this. If we ask Harun, who can give interpretation for the Quran better than Muhammad? Harun, do you have anyone better than Muhammad to give interpretation? Let us read together so people will laugh. Are you ready? Okay. Let us see which hadith it is. Hmm. Read with me carefully. <laughs> Harun, you said you I dare you. You said what? I dare you. How you recognize Allah? They ask the Prophet, how you recognize Allah? Allah will come to the Muslims in a shape other than the one which they saw first time, which we wonder what shape is that, right? Muslim, can you tell me what shape? So Allah will come to them in a shape other than the one which they saw first time. Read it. This is, this is Al-Bukhari. This is not weak. Allah will come in a shape other than the one they saw first time. And he will say, I am your Lord. <coughs> and they will say, you are not our Lord. And none will speak to him except the Prophet. Wonderful. So Allah have a shape, and he now he changed his shape. So Allah now is a change in what the shape and what shape mean physical, physical. He have a physical body, and then it will be said to them, "Do you know the sign which you can recognize him?" They will say, "The shin," and then Allah will uncover his shin. Are you there? Are you there, Mr. Harun? <coughs> Are you Mr. Harun there? Do you, do you, I dare you? Do you still dare me? This is your prophet and this is Sahih Bukhari. Hadith number 7439. So this hadith and who is the one who can explain Islam better than Muhammad? Nobody, right? So Allah have a shape and Allah will come to them in a shape other than the one they knew and the Muslim they will curse Allah and they will say bad words to him and they will say to him you are shaitan then Muhammad he says Allah then he come in the real shape what is that the shape which they recognize him with which is what which is the shin are you with me my friend So the only way to recognize the God of Muhammad is the shin of Allah. Now, if we ask the Muslims what is special about his shin, they have no idea. I mean, how you can recognize him by his shin? You tell me. Are you there, Harun? Harun is dead now. Like, Harun is playing dead. Any Muslim can tell us how we recognize Allah. And if the Muslim, by the way, they will give you that the word the shin can be can mean war in Arabic, etc. This all the fictions. But people they are asking him about seeing Allah, seeing him literally. Read from the beginning, they ask Muhammad, Are we going to see Allah? We said, Oh Allah Messenger, shall we see our Lord? See our Lord, not see war. See our Lord? He said, Yes. Do you have difficulty of seeing the sun and the moon when the sky is clear? They said, No. He said, Okay, so you would have no difficulty seeing your Lord in the day. When no difficulty of seeing him, seeing the sun and the moon. And then Allah will come to them in a shape. The story continues. And that shape will be different. So Allah is a convertible God. He can change his shape. And here Muhammad did not tell us what shape he used to have and what shape he is he, he, when he come to them, what is that? So then the Almighty come to them in a shape other than the one which they saw first time. Muslim, you saw Allah first time when? When you Muslim, you saw Allah first time, help me. 
And this is additional proof that Muhammad is a mentally ill person because according to your religion, nobody saw Allah, not even Moses. So how he claimed that you saw him, all of you Muslims? Hey Muslim, did you see him? Leave your comment and tell us if you ever saw Allah. So Allah will change his shape and the Muslim, they will, and he will say, I'm Lord, your Lord. And then the, 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 the people, they will say to him, we seek refuge by Allah from you, they, which means they accuse Allah to be shaitan. And then how you recognize Allah? They said from his shin. Nice to meet you, Mr. Shin. All those things were not known for Christians. And we spent years and years and years of education so Christian they can refute this uh, funny, stupid cult. They claim that they believed in one God, and then we find that Allah, He says, if we take a partner, we take it from us. And by the way, I don't care if you believe in one God or not, or ten, who cares? The question is if He is real or not. Muslims, they think that they are so proud that we believe in one God, one monotheism. Okay, hold on, let's say, let us say you believe in monotheism, but you are not. But let us say you do. What does that mean? Those who worship Satan, they believe that Satan is the only true God. They have a temple for Satan, and they believe he is the only true God. They are monotheists too. There's many monotheist religion in the world. But the question is, who is your God? Right? So even the logic and what they are proud about, you know, this is what happened to you when you have no honor. You try to be proud about something silly. The Indian they have, according to this guru, uh, what his name, uh, Sad Guru, he said uh, in Hinduism there is 35 million gods. Okay, maybe the number is funny for you, but this is not really funny for me because simply what if they are really exist? The question is not how many they are, the question if it's true or not. You know what I mean? Because if they are exist and they are 35 million, what you can do about it? <laughs> Can you change God nature? Can you say to God why you are alone? Because if we want to ask questions, then we should ask even how he's alone. You see, there's a question every believer, doesn't matter what religion is, he stopped with because he don't want to go further, because he cannot really ask those questions. Uh, when a Muslim he says, Allah don't have a, did not give birth, and Allah have no sons, okay. Allah don't sleep, okay. Allah don't eat, okay. Allah don't sleep, okay. It's not fit for Allah to have a son, okay. It's not fit. Why? Who said so? Who is the one who put the rules? You, the God. <clears throat> and what will happen if Allah have a son? He's going to be insulted? Very silly argument. So, uh, and if Allah, he want to take a son, he will take it from us. That's funny. Or a wife, you know, take it from us. I thought you are only one. In the same time, Muslims, they question every other God. The second you say they're God, they don't dare to question. Even how Allah sat in the, in the throne, the Muslim they say, this is haram. We can't ask this question. Like, well, it's a simple question. Allah sat in the throne, how he said. You see, any simple question will destroy us now. Any simple question. The Muslim they say to you that Allah is all knowing, Allah is etc. Allah is blah 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 blah. Allah He created the world by saying be and it was, but this is not true. The Quran said <coughs> when Allah He created the earth and everything in the earth, then He went up to the sky. You ask the Muslims, what do you mean Allah, he rose up, uh, to the sky? He was in the earth. This question alone will make them in trouble. They will say to you, this question is haram. We are not allowed to ask it. We are not allowed to discuss it. Okay, why? It's haram. Okay, why it's haram? Tell me what's the problem? If he himself saying to you, he went up. Huh? He went up. What is the problem? Because if you question it, you will find that this is against what they say. They say Allah, he create things by saying be. But then we find that Allah, he have to leave his throne and come down. And he took him many days sitting in the ground, in the earth. 
and then he went up to heaven but there was no heaven because remember in different Quran different ch chapter it says that there was no sky Allah he created everything in the earth and the sky was a smoke so Allah went up where hmm? this is a chapter 41 it says and here you see a translation says moreover this is a lie it says then thumma then and there's a period of time with thumma which means long period of time you change the translator you will find different translation right away so here let us see hilali and khan see the word moreover changed became then <clears throat> so then he is tawa the muslim they are even refusing to translate they would be tuned to bracket rows because they don't they are this word is scaring the hell of them this word is tower scaring the hell of them there's tons of videos in youtube saying to you, you cannot ask this question about host how he did that then he rose over toward the heaven but but there was no heaven it says even here it said it was a smoke so where allah was allah went where so Islam is a religion as long as you don't ask questions. The second you start asking questions, Islam is shaking. Very simple question. Was this was the heaven is exist? If the heaven wasn't exist before this point, Allah live where? <laughs> hey Muslims, where Allah he live? As you see, in this point there was no heaven. And then he made them seven heaven. So the earth is finished first, and then he made the heaven. So before that point, Allah used to live where? Homeless? Then we go to the hadith. You see, I'm trying to make the video short. This is why my videos is endless. Because, you know, conversation leads us to more evidence, more reference, more crazy stuff. Uh, what you can do? I know you hate me. All right. Muhammad, he tried to copy the Bible. As usual. Because he is a zero person, he have nothing. So where was Allah? Read carefully. Abdullah, etc., the messenger, he's saying that God recorded the fate of the, cre the, cre uh, 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 the creatures. He did not record, really. It says, Qaddara. He wrote all the maqad, which means the fate. 50 years, 50,000 years before the creation of the heaven and the earth. Okay, so 50,000 years before the creation of the heaven and earth. So 50,000 years before that date, Allah was where? Read carefully. 50,000 years, his throne was above the water. I mean, do you see the stupidity? 50,000 years before he created the earth and the heaven, his throne was above the water. Where is the water? Shouldn't he create the water first? You just said he did not create the heaven and created the earth yet. What water? Are we following people? What water we are talking about? There's no earth and there's no heaven. And this is 50,000 years before the earth and the heavens exist. His throne was above the water. Where is what water? Same time. If his throne was exist 50,000 years, years according to what? If there's no earth, there's no heaven. When we say years, we are talking about the sun movement. We are talking about a day, correct? I mean, this is a silly, stupid cult. You cannot discuss it. Even like, this is this is so silly. This is a this is a this is a duck making noise. Walk 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 walk. Fifty thousand years. There's no years yet. And uh, what years? There's no earth. There's no sky. There's no heaven. There's no sun. There's no there's no moon. So fifty thousand years. And why Allah was His throne above the water? In the Bible, it says. That when God He created the earth and the heaven, and the spirit of God was above the of the void, above, above the water, Muhammad he want to copy that. But this is about creating the earth. So the earth was covered by water, and the spirit of God over it. Okay, here we have earth, we have water, got it. But here we have what? We go to different hadith. We see the the madness go even farther.
The Muslim they say nothing is above Allah, nothing is under, uh, uh, everything is underneath of Allah. Okay, read when you carefully. I say to uh, all uh, messenger of Allah, where is our Lord? Before the creation, before He created the creation, read carefully. He said He was above the cloud. Do you see the stupidity? He just said to you before He created the creation. You said to him above the cloud. He just said to him before he created the creation. Is it the cloud the creation? Is it the earth is a creation? Is it the sky is a creation? So where was oh, where was Allah before He created the creation? He said, He was above the cloud, below which was air, and above which was air and water. <laughs> Too much hashish. <laughs> And then he created his throne above the water. Like what? <laughs> Is that the point of his starting? <laughs> so Allah, he decided to make some furniture. What does that mean? What happened to Harun? Harun is gone. Harun in the bye-bye. Harun is not just watching, laughing at his prophet. So where was Allah? Above the water. I mean, what water? There's no creation yet. Allah is a duck. And above him air, underneath of him air? Above him and underneath of him. So Allah is inside a space full of air. The Muslim, they will say to you, this is the Aif. It's not. It says Hassan. Hassan means good. This is one of the names of the grandsons of Muhammad, which is not really his son. Do we have any Muslim? As you see, this is a hashish talk, but this is the point of, of what we do here. Each moment we spend, we are learning, and I hope people are taking notes. And please don't send me email later, say where we can find that. I just received an email from a person saying to me, where we can find that Muhammad, he worship the three daughters of Allah. My friend, the satanic verses is very well known. You go to the Quran, you open the satanic verses. You can go and type in Google satanic verses. And then you can go and read the interpretation for it. Made by Muslims. You will see that oh, Muhammad, he worshipped the three daughters of Allah. This is why the Quran says, Allah will delete whatever shaitan he throw in the mouth of Muhammad. Chapter 22, verse number 50, 52. <laughs> already stoa <laughs> actually the, the the funny the word stoa can come in different meaning which means cooked so already he's cooked <laughs> he's already stoa <laughs> and by the way here other problem in the Quran like the Arabic language you see that you see now if you if you look at the language right now you see dots you see like volve in the top those will not exist which will make it impossible really to read because it can mean something else. Even the way the letters were, they are written now, it is totally different from the original. Just one dot can change everything. There's a story once in, 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 in Lebanon, uh, an article in newspaper, an article, you know, Speaking about one of the partition, he's a leader of militant group. They just forgot a dot. They forgot a dot. They did not add a dot. They forgot a dot. Tens of people get killed because they start shooting at each other. Oh, you are insulted, etc. They just forget a dot in the newspaper print. How we can read the Quran? So. And the funny, the one who, who, who fixed the Quran, he is not even an Arab. He fixed the Quran of Allah. He fixed the Arabic of Allah. And then there's other person he came, Al-Farahidi. He came and he make even fix more fix. Because the Quran was written in a very stupid way. And I mentioned to you, there's many things in the Quran is not the same as it is today. Like when we say, when we say the word is sky, there's no sky. You see now we keep saying he made them seven sky, right? But in the original Quran, there is no there is no sky. You see here it says heaven. 
In Arabic it says, Sama. In the original Quran, there is no Sama. There's Samut. And Samut have totally different meaning. And the reason I avoid talking about it, or making videos especially about it, uh, <clears throat> it will not make too much sense for those who don't speak Arabic anyway. So when you see the Quran saying, Sab'u Samawat, there's not the Quran have not is, is, this word does not exist in the Quran. And I challenge any Muslim to challenge me, to challenge me, to say, Christian Prince, you are lying. This is how the word was exist always in the Quran. Samawat. Samawat here mean skies. But it's not exist in the Quran. And there's tons of words like this. It was a guy, his name is Al -Far Al Farahidi or Farahidi. He is the one who fixed it. He said Samut doesn't make sense. It must be Samawat. Let us make it Samawat. And now they are copying what the guy he said, not what Allah he said. <clears throat> uh, anyway, do we have any uh, uh, any question? Actually, here uh, we have a Mister Inshallah saying, "I already said that nikah has two meaning: can be sexual intercourse." And also marriage according to Arabic. Okay, my friend, the the Arabic lexicon they they do what people use as a language today. As an example, uh, today the word sa sa in Arabic means sixty minutes. Sa in the time of Muhammad was no less than ten to fifteen minutes. So. Allah in the whole is that the 60 minute so you see the word sah it's all over so today the word of it or use of it is different from the time of Muhammad use so you are going by a dictionary which is made now have nothing to do with the time of Muhammad and the language the original language same time when you say to me that this this word nikah have two meaning isn't it stupid to use a word have two meaning and one of them is to F for marriage in Arabic we have the word zawaj already we use it you do not need to use the word nikah so why you are using a word which is filthy so if you are saying to me that this word have two meaning that's mean the original meaning of it it is the intercourse today you are using it as marriage but it's not and this is why your prophet is saying do everything except nikah when your wife she have menstruation or your woman do everything except nikah so when the muslim they give an excuse the excuse is even more guilty than the accusation itself and this is God. Could not God find a better word from Nikah? Yeah, that is example. The word gay used to be a word mean happy not long time ago. And now it is a word mean something else. Right? However, <clears throat> the Quran, the Quran today have nothing to do with the Quran exists in the time of Muhammad. And this is a proving left and right. And you ask the Muslims, who is the one who add those things? Who is the one actually the Quran in front of us? Who is the one who named those verses like this or or chapters? Who is the one who gave the numbers? Did Allah give you numbers? Did Allah he says to you this is a verse? Did Allah say is this sentence is a verse? No. Did the angel says that? No. The Muslim they are trying to make a book like the Bible. So they have chapters and they have verses. But this is not how they're God. 
give it to them? Did Allah, he says to Muhammad, chapter 7, verse number 34, no. Uh, 33, 49, you give me. Okay, let's go to 43. Okay, well done. 33, sorry. All right, let's go to 33, 49. <clears throat> you will be sorry. The second we go there, you will say to me, I don't mean it. Be ready. <clears throat> okay, this is 49. Hmm. You see, this is your translation saying, if you do, when you marry a believing woman and then divorce them, and you say the word is nakahtum, mean marriage, that's false. Because divorce in Islam happen only if you do intercourse. Marriage is not exist unless you do intercourse. Before the intercourse is called katbul kitab. So when you say, wa idha nakahtum, mean when you F women, then their divorce will be the following. And this is why if we go and search right now in, in Prophet Google, peace upon him, we will find that a man, he will not pay his dowry unless he do the nikah, which means the intercourse. And he cannot divorce a woman if she is not his wife anyway. Right? So when you do the intercourse, she is your wife. Before that, it's just a katbul kitab, which means a, a marriage without uh, a, a consummate the marriage, what they call it. Yeah. So she is legally your wife, but the word nikah is what will make the wife your wife. Before that day, she is just, there's a contract. A contract, an agreement. That is called katbul kitab. The nikah is confirming it, which means the intercourse. Same time, look what you what you uh, what you what you give me. Uh, I will take the word you gave me, and I will copy it, and I will paste it again in the search engine. Read carefully. Chapter two. Verse number 230, if a husband, he divorce a wife, she cannot go back to the previous husband unless she do nikah to the new husband. So now she have a husband, but she have to do nikah to him. Say that if you divorce them before you touch them. So guys, if you divorce them before you touch them, okay, what is the word touch? What is the word touch? Hmm? You see, you just you just answer yourself. Guys, thank you for saying that. Guys, read with me carefully. He just got his prophet busted. Okay, read. <clears throat> Let us put your comments so people they can see. Are you blind? Can't you see that the verse says if you divorce them before you touch them? Let us see. In the front of you it says, and if you divorce them before you touch them, you have nothing with them. So why it says either nakahtum al mu'minat? Here he is making an exception. If you do if the believers and then you divorce them, or if you marry the believer before you touch them, then you have no, uh, uh, let us say, you have no uh, uh, responsibility on them, right? So when, when we take it as marriage and then you divorce them, but how you divorce someone, she is not your wife. And the proof of that, you will see that she have no idda, which means she need to not to wait for three months. Why? Because simply you did not consummate the marriage. 
because there's no, no nikah happened. There's no marriage happened. There's nothing. This is why the women, she do not need to wait. So what marriage is, is you having sex with the wife. If you don't have sex with the wife, the marriage never happened. It's just a contract. <clears throat> uh, you are saying that you can have sex with women without touching them? No, I'm not saying you can have sex with women without touching them. But in according to your religion, my friend, it says, uh, in your in your book here it says you see even you Muslims you translate saying intercourse do you see the word intercourse do you see it so you are going to pay and you have a lawful obligation only if you do intercourse right only if you do intercourse and here Muhammad is giving an uh, like an exception Muslim they do nikah usually they do the intercourse part as part of the nikah right but here, you are going in the process of nikah, which means you stop before the intercourse. Therefore, it's not a marriage. Therefore, there's no obligation. Therefore, you don't you don't you don't pay the worry. Therefore, she don't wait a period. Therefore, she have no obligation against you. You have nothing against her. She go home and she is free. And when your prophet he says, do everything when women have intercourse except nikah. And if the word nikah mean marriage, then how he say you do everything with your wife except nikah? And we show the reference already. Let us go there and put the hadith in front of you. This is your prophet saying that, not me. You do everything with the wife except nikah. Give me a second. Read carefully. When you do with your wife, jami'uhunna fil biyut wasna'u kulla shay ghayra nikah. So when you do with your wife, you do with her everything except the nikah. So if nikah mean marriage, how he is saying you do everything with your wife except marriage? Is she married already to him or not? Do you see it? So do everything with your wife except the nikah. Let us go and see the translation. Do everything with your wife except intercourse. So you are bringing your confusion to us saying, are you now playing with the word 3349 clear that nikah mean marriage? Otherwise, why you divorced him? Well, let, let us go with this. Why, uh, 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 how you can divorce women before you marry them, correct? This is what you are saying. Well, let us go and see if this is true or not. If we go in the in the Quran and we see what is the word divorce anyway? What is the word divorce? Who is the one have the right to divorce? Is somebody is married, right? Okay. But how the marriage in Islam is accepted to be marriage? What is the marriage? Let us go to the Quran. It says, you pay your wages for using it, for enjoying it. So marriage in Islam is using the women private part and enjoying it, literally. Chapter 4, verse number 24, and this is the same chapter used for the muta. Read carefully. It's forbidden for you to do nikah, to married women, listen carefully, it's forbidden for you to do nikah to a married woman. Okay, nikah to married women. Except your slaves. So nikah is marriage. And then if you if you enjoy it, if you enjoy it, then you pay from your property for enjoying the sexual intercourse. Do you see it? So the nikah here is only considered to be nikah 
only if you do the sexual intercourse because before that it's just a paper this is what your Quran saying in the other chapter it's not really a marriage there's no marriage happen you are free she's free but if you do the intercourse that is really the nikah this is marriage now according to your religion and then you have to pay her because you enjoy it you see here it says so those who of you who have enjoyed sexual relationship give them the mahar so when you pay the mahar you pay the mahar when you do the intercourse nikah otherwise she don't deserve anything why because you enjoy her private part are you with me so don't tell me are you avoiding chapter the other chapter we are not avoiding it it is your stupid religion creating its own rules marriage is a person who have obligation as you see there's no obligation unless you do the intercourse so it's not marriage yet so the word nikah is a process of you going to sleep with the women and then when you sleep with her you pay her uh, chapter 2 verse number 237 let us go to chapter 2 verse number 237 and then you will be sorry again. Here we go. Read carefully with me. <clears throat> and if you divorce him before you touch them, if you divorce him before you touch him, what does that mean? It means you cancel the contract. And then it says here, those who have uqdatun nikah, Look what look what your prophet. I think you are helping me. Are you sure you are a Muslim? I think you are coming to help me. Look what your what your Quran is saying. Those who have in their hand uqdatu an nikah. What does that mean? I'm waiting for your answer in the in the chat. Those who have in their hand uqdatu nikah. What does that mean? Are you there? Now the Muslim, they will say, this guy is paid by a Christian prince and he is not a Muslim. Do you like to call me? Do you like to call me in Skype? So everybody will hear you? Are you there? <clears throat> What Aqdatu Nakah mean? <clears throat> it's mean you have a contract of intercourse. <laughs> you just get yourself busted. If it's a marriage, you do not need to say Aqdatu Nikah. If it's the word marriage, there's no need to say the word uqda. Are you there? And we can go right now and we can open any interpretation of your, of your choice. No, it's not a marriage contract. It's not a marriage contract. Because already it's a contract, it's already, a, okay, hold on. You are denying what I am saying that it is a sexual contract, sexual contract, sexual contract, and now you give me a verse saying it's a sexual contract. Because it's a marriage, you don't say contract, you don't use the word contract. 